No, I, I didn't. But we are recording now. And uh, what do we have here, Deviant Historian? We have the Kodak Tele camera outfit. Extra light. There you go, Mr. Alphabet. Um, and this is a Model 20. It's from 1979. We got it for $3.88. I saw it on eBay for like 20 bucks. Yeah. So, and this is all in the original packaging and and all that. And yeah, we can uh, just kind of look at that there. It's a pretty cool, cool thing. And now I have to get off my ass and get near it and actually take it apart and show you guys it. So this thing is. <sighs> Yeah, it's from what, 1978? Nine. 79. 79. Yeah, it says it right so, there. So it's uh, it's about 40 years old. Yeah. Just a year short of 40 years. And, and I wanted to mention, you guys, um, uh, one as kind of a hook for this video, and I'm going to use a mirror here to show you, and I'm actually going to use, I think it's been shown in other videos, the uh, Deviant Historian's uh, somewhat logo it's it's a he it's <laughs> it's it's the Dell logo but the but that's not the logo itself it, this is like a coat of arms basically yeah where yeah there is a there is a proprietary trademark uh, logo uh, trademark logo on there but the circuitry and then also the mirror itself it's just kind of hit and then um, if you open it up there's a mirror here and you can see what you can see that this Kodak is being filmed buy another Kodak. This Kodak being a digital uh, uh, Kodak Easy, Ch Easy Share, which I uh, lovingly refer to as the PT Cruiser because of its purple color. But this thing is about not quite 10 years old. It's, it's approaching a decade old. But this baby is uh, how to communicate with your... Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. so, yeah. I said to distract him. I wanted to distract him. I'm like, you're making this too serious for my camera video, man. Yeah, way to completely throw me off. Yep, you're like, welcome. I'm, I'm good at that. But at any rate, the camera that you just saw in the reflection of that, mi of that mirror, it, it's it's approaching a decade old. This thing is over four times older. Yep. And this is what this is what co this is what cameras this is what a state of the art camera was like back then. Okay. Kodak. I mean, Kodak, they're a big deal. Kodak Eastman. Well, until they went bankrupt. Until they went bankrupt. But until then, they were really, they were almost synonymous with cameras. Well, they even invented the digital camera, but they were too complacent to say, hey, we got a lucrative camera business or a film business. Why mess that up? And the one dude, like, blew his brains out, too, like, years and years ago. And I believe that they also invented the, uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The one that auto develops the, the Oh yeah, instant film. I thought that was Polaroid. Oh Polaroid. Okay, yeah, they invented that. So I guess Kodak did not invent that. Full color guide. Here's some really hip seventies photos, man. It's a full color little guidebook. Imagine how cool you're gonna look. Holding up this thing to your face that looks like a like a black brick. <laughs> Just like taking somebody's picture, they're gonna be like, "Oh man, this person's from the future." Here's this. Just some stickers, I guess. For labeling for labeling shit. Why? What's the twenty about? Tw That's the model. Twenty camera outfit. Okay. And this says S. KD, so I don't know if that's their initials or... On the box, there's a picture of a chick drying her hair or something. Yeah, they stocked her and just took pictures of some woman in a pool. Yeah. She looks happy about it, though. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't be if getting their picture taken with this thing? Make you feel like a supermodel. Yep. Oh, look at it. It's dual lenses. Do you see that? Yeah. That's cool. I don't even think this thing was used. The camera that's filming this, the Kodak Easy Oh, chair. dude, there's a flash, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. It even sounded cool. It sounded like something was going to, like, take off. Like, shoop, like, I do this, and then... Oh, uh, damn it. I have an even older camera at home that has a, uh, a flash bulb. My grandpa 
owned it and now I own it and it's a camera that it has an actual flash bulb yeah I, I think I might have one of those too it was a family one but I haven't seen it in a little while yeah but the camera that's filming this the Kodak Easy Share C195 is actually one of the last cameras that Kodak sold before it went bankrupt it went bankrupt like a year after that, like in 2012. Wow. So it's, uh... But this was back during happier days, when they were doing better and not about to go bankrupt. Once you know, it, oh, so go ahead. Go. I was going to say that when a, when, a, when a technology company goes bankrupt, the name almost always gets, like, um, picked, back, picked up by somebody else. But that doesn't mean that the proud tradition of quality carries on. Like, for example, Vivitar. You, you know about Vivitar, right? Kind of. Vivitar is another company that sold really nice cameras, but they went bankrupt. And now they, they were bought out by a kind of a smaller, a smaller outfit. The name was bought by a smaller outfit that was like, that wanted to like make money on the name, but they made cheap cameras. Yeah, so they just destroyed the brand. They pretty much destroyed the brand. Now when you go and to the store and you look at a Vivitar, they're just not... I've, I bought a Vivitar once and I almost don't even want to talk about it. I had to return it. Um, <laughs> okay. It was a big... Uh, and it was very inconvenient. It was like sort of a camera that was made to look like a uh, like one of those little GoPros with the waterproof case and everything. and It just... Was not it was not a GoPro. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. Much. Vivitar or, or Kodak to me was kind of the Cadillac of cameras. They set the high bar. They really invented it originally, and they kind of you know what I mean? Yeah. Why did it ovation in that? Well, I mean they date back to the early days of photography. They date back to like Kodak and Eastman. They were the one. They they helped invent key aspects of photography itself. I mean, yep. I mean, that was back when people were still basically developing the technology, you know, like, like the, 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 the preliminary, like the, the, the preliminary technology of, of camera work. It's pretty cool, and it's, it's good, but now really, point and shoot has really, unless you have a DSLR and you drop like three grand on a camera, it seems like point and shoot is really your cell phone. That's like 90% of the market. Yeah within the last five years or so, I'd say. Yeah, well, and I will say, I mean, and I know I keep, I think the Deviant Historian is a little bit annoyed that I keep bringing, bringing, uh, changing the subject back to my camera, but it is a Kodak, so it is relevant. But um, this camera is st still working uh, after almost a decade of pretty heavy use. So, I mean, they, I think they do make good shit. I think that they're, I think that, when you buy a, co a Kodak, or at least if you bu if you bought a Kodak before the year 2012, it was a quality camera. Yeah, I'd say I think so. Even though I think this was probably made in America, the one that we're filming, and the one that's filming it is probably made in China. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, almost definitely. But um, let's take a look at take a look at the box here. Let's see what it says on the smaller print. Something about New York. 20 exposure roll of Kodak color film, two AA size batteries, monogram initials, wrist strap, instruction manual, automatically adjust, adjusts for films such as Kodak color 400 and Kodak color 2 films. So it has, it, it auto adjusts, that was probably quite a treat back then. A full three year warranty. So if the year is 1981, I guess you're in good luck, or, <laughs> or in 82, like you're in luck. But uh, Rochester, New York. There's the uh, there's the Kodak logo, famous Kodak logo. Kodak also made they they made uh, they sold uh, 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 home videos, and they had some good ones. Uh, one of them was the uh, Smothers Brothers Yo-Yo uh, instructional video, which my parents bought me for Christmas one year, and it was a Kodak. It was part of the Kodak family video series, and that was where I first learned to yo-yo was 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 watching that tape over and over, and it was entertaining. They they showed previews before it of other things that in the Kodak video series. They had one of uh, Bill Cosby doing his uh, 
49th birthday comedy special. Oh. They had one of, uh, of, uh, uh, it was like sort of a, it was like a video game, a, a video board game, which in the 1980s were very popular, where you're, it's a board game, but there are videotapes that correspond with it, so it's like there was one that was designed by, based on uh, an Isaac Asimov story. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, it was like an Isaac Asimov sci-fi mystery that got, that, that he turned into a board game. And it was pretty cool. The special effects were so shitty. <laughs> it was like so low budget. But the, uh, the concept itself was cool. Like, I'm sure that really, like, nerdy families in the 1980s were all over that. But, um, but yeah, and there were other, other videos, uh, too, uh, uh, Roller coasters, like it was a, they, they had like a half hour documentary of all of the different roller coasters and like somebody actually riding the roller coaster with a camera so you could see, you know, you could see what the roller coaster was like. It was like they just showed a bunch of different roller coasters. You mean Barfo Vision. Barfo Vision, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was the Kodak video series back in the, back in the 80s. Yeah, I don't think I ever really watched those series much. Uh, they kind of focused on family stuff, uh, mm -hmm. fun for the whole family type things. But they did have, like I said, those those video tape, video like board games with video tie-ins, and then the Smothers Brothers yo-yo video, and they had other how-to videos too. Like I think they had like how to play the harmonica and other other shit like that. Kodak was pretty big in the 70s and 80s, oh, though. Oh, you reminded me now. Cryptocurrencies, right ah, now. Ah, yes, we don't want to forget that. Bitcoin is going crazy. And Bitcoin is like a Dutch tulip festival, or Dutch tulip speculation from hundreds of years ago, where everybody's like hysterical about Dutch tulips and their value and all that stuff, when they're just meaningless bullshit. Well, anyhow, um, Bitcoin has um, has been going crazy. There's what's it at? Like twenty thousand dollars for one Bitcoin or some crazy yeah. thing? It's thousands and thousands of dollars, and a lot of that has to do with money laundering in China, because a lot of the money in China can't get out of China, so they have to wander it through Bitcoin. So that that's one of the main reasons that Bitcoin's doing what it's doing. But it's all a speculative bubble, and uh, it could collapse at any time. And you know it's a speculative bubble, because late in 2017 to now, all the media is having a field day about it and all this stuff. And you guys are probably wondering, well, what the hell am I talking about Bitcoin with a Kodak camera? Kodak, I think it's called Kodak Coin or something yeah. like that. And Kodak, let us remind you, is currently a bankrupt company. And they're, they're, they're coming up with Kodak Coin for currency, a digital yep. currency. That wants you to build confidence in all this cryptocurrency bullshit that's totally unregulated and just totally artificial and total bullshit. It's at a bankrupt phone company from a century ago. Or camera company. Yeah. From essentially, yeah, that, that's, that went bankrupt years ago uh, now has... <laughs> Now has their own cryptocurrency. Wow, that's I, I really want to give me. Some, I, I'm actually kind of tempted to buy a dollar or whatever the hell it is in, in Kodak currency, just as like a joke. Yeah. Just you know, it's sort of like yeah, it's like owning a share of the Green Bay Packers. You're doing it out of charity. Yeah. And out of respect for what they did and whatever. And I like Green Bay, and I do like that you can own it, but you're not going to actually have any rights with that. It's not like a real shareholder, or we expect a return on your investment. And that would be the same thing with the Kodak coin. You're just giving them some money and some brand value. I'm more into land and silver. Yeah, I like stocks and real estate. So, you know, we could do a whole video on diversification and revenue streams and assets and, you know, all that stuff. But it is good as just a first step in investing to make sure that what you're investing in has value. Well, digital fantasy bucks for my cryptocurrency for my bankrupt... Uh, camera company, that's the most sustainable investment. I was going to put all my eggs in the Bitcoin and the Kodak coin basket. What could possibly go wrong? Yep. I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah. And I'm going to buy uh, I'm going to buy a bunch, I'm going to buy <coughs> I'm going to buy sex bucks. It's, 
It's a sex box, and the and the uh, the denomination is humps. I'm going <laughs> to buy, buy twenty eight thousand humps in sex bucks. That's my favorite uh, cryptocurrency. Oh, that's a really cool cryptocurrency. Yep, twenty thousand humps. And you can translate that into in, into pussy coin. <laughs> you know, and with pussy coin, that actually gets you away. They use that at most strip clubs now. They don't take Visa, Mastercard, or cash. They take pussy coin. But see, there's a transaction fee to get your stuff. It's like you got to use an ATM, and then yeah. And the ATM, the 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 it comes out of a hole that, that's shaped like a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> like the deposit uh, thing, or the, uh, the... Yeah, this is definitely not a family-friendly video about Kodak, just, uh... <laughs> yeah. But I don't think we were striving for that, but I was just... No, I don't think, I think it's far too late to, to try to be family, for, to try to make <laughs> any of these uh, videos family-friendly. Yeah, with all the swearing and all the crazy tirades and stuff, but... I, I'm glad I got into that crypto thing because we were going on earlier about stuff and then I was like, wait a second, there was something really crucial that I... Because to me, that just... You might as well just say we got clown car currency right now. And so what's this based on? Well, see, the clown cars right now, these clowns are using, they're they're actually highly le leveraged de uh, debt and they have CDOs and they have all these acronyms and letters that correspond with the alphabet soup. But see, what you do with the derivative from it is you create clown currency and now a lot of people just think it's a joke but the clown currency it's it's about a hundred thousand different clown cars right now that are leveraged at about three hundred percent of their current asset value now clown cars do depreciate in value too and need service they may end up in the junk or in the scrapper at some point but on their current net asset value it's we're leveraged at about three hundred percent so we really want people to invest in our clown uh, clown car coins you know it's 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 kind of like clown card coins for clunkers and you know it's just going to really help that group and it should make a lot of people really rich i don't know i was just trying to think of what's the most absurd thing that we could do besides kodak i mean kodak kodak's currency is pretty ludicrous but clown card coins you i know. think yeah i think you did it i think you you succeeded in creating this 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 infra infrastructure of of just fraud of and absurd of absurdity and ridiculousness and you are the architect of the, uh, the architect of the clown buck absurdity yep and see I'm gonna become a millionaire off of it now I just need all you guys to invest in the clown coin hey, chunk hey folks do you think this is a joke honk honk <laughs> it's very serious around here you know like this is this shit's real business, man. Clowns are no laughing matter. <laughs> so, we have... And the tireder we get, the more vulgar and, re obnoxious. and obnoxious and absurd we get. And on that, I'm pretty open to ending it. I think we I covered everything. I do like the idea of, what you say, the pussy coins? Yeah. Where the thing, the slot that come, where they come out is shaped like a vagina. Yeah, I think that that would be, that's totally not objectifying, that's just an empowering thing about pay equality. It's supposed to remind all people about pay equality. Well, it's to show that, that women have a, a lot of purchasing power, and that they, that, and that they can be wealth, the wealth makers of the family. It's a symbol of empowerment. Yep, and of, the, of female productivity. Yep. And the Kodak camera. <laughs>